Hey everybody, this is Brad from Johnson Small Engines, better known as the One Hand Mechanic, if I can do it, you can too. Today we have here a Husqvarna YTH2242, and today I'm going to show you, in my opinion, on how to service your machine, or this machine. This actually came in a little bit earlier than normal because the uh, guy was having a problem with the battery dying, and uh, we'll get into that a little bit, but first thing I would do when I service a machine is open up the hood and double check your oil before you run it. So what we have to do now is, I already had it outside to warm it up to change the engine oil, and we're gonna take the motor dig off, but let me go ahead and show you guys some tools and some supplies that are needed for this job. Okay, so the tools we need today, this is a little mini compressor if you guys have whatever you need to fill up your tires with. We have a grease gun, a very long pry bar, this nozzle here I'm using for my air compressor and a tire gauge, two quarts of oil. Um, check your, wherever you live, I would check the manual on the type of oil that you need in your engine. This is a four and a half inch grinder. The, uh, this is the oil drain that we're going to be taking the other one off the quick disconnect and using this one from John Deere. These are really nice and uh, definitely recommend, you know, if you have problems with the other ones leaking, which most of them do, go to this one. Oil filter wrench. This is a half inch breaker bar. This is about a foot long. If you can, whatever the longest is for leverage, it's gonna help you out a lot when you take the blades off. We have battery protector. I have a little gadget here for taking debris out of the fuel tank. You'll see that in action. 5 8 socket, 15 16 socket, 7 16 socket, 5 8 um, This These two 5 8 are a little bit different. This one here is for your spark plug, and that one's just we're gonna use to take the blades off. A couple extensions, 3 8 extensions. This is a crow's foot that will help you take off the uh, oil drain, and you'll see that. Couple pair of pliers, 7 16 wrench, couple ratchets, half inch and 3 8 This is anti-seize, this is copper-based anti-seize. I use it on a lot of different things. Back here is our, this is our gauge that's gonna help us um, level the mower deck. We have the oil filter here. I'll put the part numbers down in the description below. This here is the NGK spark plugs I use, is equivalent to an RC12YC Champion. A couple scrapers, a multimeter, a piece of sandpaper if needed, and a flashlight. And then this guy here is my super long extension if I need it for uh, taking the blades off. All right, let's get to it. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and take the mower deck off. The mower deck is all the way down as far as it'll go. We'll take off this rear pin first. And these pins are really nice. I like them. They're easy to take on and off, and they work very well. Now, if your mower deck, if this arm does not come off your mower deck when it's all the way down and there's, there's a tension right here, you can go ahead and put a pry bar underneath your mower deck and pry up on it a little bit, which will allow you to get that off real easy. This one's uh, actually working pretty well right now. Okay, we're gonna take the center arm off and you're gonna take this clip out like so. Pull that arm off. And since we're on this side, we're gonna go ahead and take the mower deck belt off the front engine pulley. And this is a manual blade engagement, uh, so you're not going to have any issues with uh, having spring tension. If you have a mower deck that has an electric, electric um, PTO on it, I may have a video on how to take that mower deck off. But this is a manual one. It's pretty easy. Just drop the uh, belt down, and you have a couple eyelet hooks right here that the belt must go into when you're putting it back on, on, on the other side also. So let's go ahead to the other side and take the other arms off. Okay, so we're going to take this clip off here, and it has a washer, and this one has a little tension on it. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and put my power bar underneath the back of the motor deck here, slide it in, and just by sliding it in and picking this deck up just a little bit, it made it fall right off. Then we have our middle clip here. And I always recommend having the clips facing rearward as you're, as you're putting them in the machine. So when you put your clips back in, have them facing rearward. These clips are real good, but if you have them facing forward, sometimes if they're facing this way and they hit something, they could pop out. So if you have them facing rearward, if they hit something, they're gonna go in and stay locked in. They won't fall out on you. Okay, then this arm should just fall down. We have a front clip here, front pin. Just take this one off. This one's usually a little bit smaller than the other ones. And the washer. Now this front piece right here definitely 
take this out. If you're going to be working on your machine, you don't want to drive around your machine, or if you're just if you're just taking the motor deck off and you're going to use your tractor as a tractor and pull things around, take this out the front because this will bend. It'll jackknife and then it'll bend. You don't want to bend this. Usually doesn't bend back very easily. Okay, so now we're ready to move the motor deck out and we have this cable right here which has your blade engagement cable. Okay, and there is a little clip up here, right here. And that has to be, it just it's like a little push clip and then that cable will fall out like that. At this point, we can go ahead and slide the motor deck out. We still have to get that cable off, but we're gonna go ahead, since we have a little bit of room here, slide this out until you see the cable. Move this arm out of the way. So the cable's right here. And normally you can, there's a little tab. Okay, so this one has a little tab here and you're gonna need to use a pair of pliers. I'm not sure if we're gonna be able to cut this. It's not actually underneath. So if you push the tab in and pull the cable out, it will come out of the slot like that. All right. And some of them had clips, some of them didn't. This one has that little tab right here. And that little tab you push in and that's how it locks itself into that bracket there. This is nice. It gives you a little more tension on the belt. It's not a lot, but it's a nice bracket. They kind of, some mowers had them, some mowers didn't have them, but it is a nice feature. And then when you take the spring out, just remember the hole, we'll pull this out a little bit more so you can see it. You just don't want to pull too hard, you'll kink your cable. There's a hole, and this is the, this is how the blade engages, just like that. So you're gonna go ahead and just tip it like at 90 degrees. It just goes in a hole just like so. Now they may be a little different from one to the other. You're going to get this out of your way, put it somewhere where you, it's not going to be run over. I have seen many of them get kinked. And we're just going to go ahead and slide this out. Now while we have it out here, there's a couple things that you want to look for when you're servicing your machine. You want to spin your pulleys and listen to them. And this feels fine. This, I hope that one's got a little bit of noise, but it's not bad. And then you also have a blade break here. All right, so what happens is when you engage your blades, they engage and it takes the blade breaks off right here. So the blades will spin freely, okay? And if they spin freely, now you can also check by holding this out, you can also check your blade bearings. They don't sound too bad. You, can, you can't really hear them. I can hear them over the belt a little bit, but they, they're fine. And then over here, you also have a blade break here, okay? And you really have to engage your mower deck to get this one. But you want to make sure the blade breaks actually have their composite part right here that it's working. And it's not metal to metal. All right, so that bearing's in good condition. Whatever you do, please try not to wash your machine unless needed. This machine has 500 and some hours on it, and these pulleys are original, all right? And they're still doing really well. He does not wash this machine. I do clean it the best I can, and I know how to sling off all the water, high compressed air, yada, yada, yada. So just keep that in mind. Now, since we had the motor deck off, we might as well go ahead and remove the blades to be sharpened, or you might want to just go ahead and remove your blades and replace them. Okay, before I turn this over, I just want to make sure you check your belt. These guides right here are important, okay? This is what keeps the belt from falling off when it's disengaged, because this is a manual engagement belt system, and it's not taut, it's not tight all the time. So when it's loose, th these are here, these fingers are here, so it doesn't fall off. And you don't want them bent out, okay? You want them as close as you can to the pulley without without the belt actually rubbing it when it's engaged. So when this is engaged, it's gonna be in like this, and there's no chance of it rubbing, okay? When it's disengaged, it's like this, and it's just flopping. Same with this over here. You don't want it to be able to come out. That's a little bit questionable right there. And you can bend them in. You can also take off your pulley, bend them in a little bit. Right, and they do have belt guides here, 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 and here. This one here is a little bit further out than I like to be. As you can see, this one here is real close to the pulley and that's where they should be because when everything's tight, when they're running, as you can see on the side, it's actually closer. So what I'm gonna do to this one to move it in a little bit, use a socket and a extension. So I'm gonna go ahead and just use a socket with an extension on it. 
and I'm going to bend it in a little bit. It shouldn't fall off. You should be fine with that. Okay, so let's go ahead and tip it up on its edge so we can look at the blades. Blades are in pretty good shape. But your, the most important thing you do down here with your blades is you want to make sure that your blades are even coming across each other here. This one here is a little bit off, but, but then you flip it around. And if one side comes even, this, one, this one's just a little bit not too far off. It looks like this, this blade might be a little bit bent, but it's not, it's not bad. It's not horrible. So we're going to have a pretty good cut right there. That's important. If you guys, if it's way off side to side right there, like if this, if this gap, like this one blade sticking that way or this way, you have to fix that. I do have a, if you put brand new blades on here and these blades are not even going across each other, I have a video on how to fix that. It's not an easy fix, but you can fix it if you have new blades and you still have a bad gap. Okay, this guy's blades are fine. It's a little bit off on one side, but not too bad. We're gonna go ahead and take this off here, the, the bolts, and that should be a 5.8 socket. It's a 5.8 socket. I'm gonna, I switched up and I got a shallow socket to give me a little bit better leverage without it coming off. And I'm gonna use a, this is a breaker bar. And you want as much leverage as you can. Get yourself a block of wood. Because what you're trying to do is you have to stop that blade from turning. So a block of wood will work. And remember, lefty loosey, righty tighty. So when you get everything set up, I'm going to go counterclockwise, take it off, just like this. Some of them are easier and some of them are hard. And if you take off your blades, this is a lot of people take their blades off. And it's like, a, it's like a puzzle. There's a star here, and there's a star on the shaft itself. And this has to sit right in on that. That's how it keeps it on and stationary. If these are not, if it's mushroomed right here, and this is sticking off of it to the side or whatever, and it's not right, it's from somebody putting them on wrong, incorrectly, and mushrooming this, you need the shaft. So keep that in mind. It, almost, it must work like a puzzle. And it'll slide on and it'll stay there. Then you tighten it up. I'm gonna go ahead and take the other side off. Okay, so the other side, we're gonna go ahead and uh, if you have to, clean that up. It's 5 8 again, and your block of wood, whatever you need to do to stop this. And I always try to go which way the blade goes because if you go backwards and you didn't disconnect or didn't move the brakes out of the way, you basically have to engage the mower deck to get these things because the brakes hold these up. So if you, if you try to go backwards on the blade, it, it really doesn't want to because the brake is against that pulley. So always remember, you can always go this way because when they stop, it, the, the brake is only you know slowing it down as they're going this way. And that's the, the blade is sharp that way right here. So you're always going, I guess this is counterclockwise as they're moving. Um, so I move it this way, put my block of wood wherever I can get it to hold. And then again, I'm gonna put the socket on here and pull. All right, that wasn't too bad. Some of these can be a real bear. Take off your bolt. And this, this one has some little stuff wrapped around it, but not a big deal. And you always want to make sure that you're not mushroomed, and this one is fine. So you just want to make sure that you can put that blade on the star, just like that. If they're mushroomed, you have to replace this, like I just said. Now, there's a lot of grass here. We're going to go ahead and scrape this mower deck and I'm going to go ahead and scrape the blades off to get all the grass off of this and then I'm going to go ahead now. These blades are not in bad shape. All right, I'm going to go ahead and sharpen these up. I use a four inch hand grinder. I'm not going to show you that because however you guys do this is, is however you want to do it. There's no, uh, I mean they used to have blade grinders back in the day that we used. Um, they went to pretty much a lot of mulching blades now so we do it by hand. At least I do. Um, I get a nice, just make sure you always go with the, the same angle as when it was brand new. A lot of guys just do the edge right here. That's not correct. You want to do the whole angle exactly the way it was. I'm going to go ahead and clean this up, clean the mower deck up, and I'll be right back after we get this all sharpened up and ready to go back on. We're going to change the oil. This is a twin cylinder Intec, and they have a quick disconnect or a quick change right here. 
Um, they work fine. A lot of people don't like these things because they leak. The reason why they leak is because from, the, from where it bolts into the block, for some reason, I don't know if they vibrate back. If this needs to be tightened, you're going to see, and there's actually no oil on the side of this. And this has not been pressure washed. It has not been cleaned prior to the service. So he is not leaking right there. I've had this machine in here many times. I've probably tightened that thing up probably at least one or two times over the years. But basically, you get yourself a tube that'll fit right over this. Make sure that you always have to make sure that that's in the lock position, which it is right there. You can see that little tab on there. It's got to be in lock position when you're driving it so it doesn't leak all over the place. And there is a nice cap, dust cap on there. I'm going to pull the cap off. I'm going to go ahead and push that in on it. And then I'm going to jack up the left side of the mower. And I use a six by six block. You guys can do however it works for you guys. Just putting the, jacking it up. We're gonna put the block of wood. And you have to be careful. I've been doing this quite a while. It's on the bottom of the transmission. Nothing's, in, no, there's no harm being done there. I'm gonna go ahead and put the block underneath the tire, rear tire. Then I go ahead and let it down. Then I use the front part of the where the where I took the bar out for the for the um, mower deck, that's a very stationary part where you put that bar on the frame. And I tilt the whole engine. You might not be able to see that, um, but the whole engine's tilted at an angle, so I'll get the most oil out. And what I'll do now is I'll go ahead and drain this oil while I'm cleaning the mower deck. Now you just have to twist it and just twist it halfway. And that will actually get the tab right where it's in a slide position right here. A little bit hard to see this, but right where it slides. Now I, I have it in a slide position. I'm going to go ahead and pull that out. And you, oh, you don't want to pull too far. Now I just pulled a little too far. And that's one of the reasons why people don't like it. That just popped off on me. And yes, it's not supposed to. It does. So it's been there for, been using that for a long time. There is another way you could do the oil drain, and that would be taking this, taking that out and putting it in a pipe oil drain. And I have them, if you don't like these style or if they start giving you problems like this one just did, I may actually do this. And you can put a pipe thread in there. I use a John Deere equivalent to when, let's see here, see if I can find this oil drain valve. This is the one I use on most of the twin cylinders. It's a little bit longer. And again, like I said, this is a John Deere setup, which it really works for the, the engines. Now, this one here, I'm gonna go ahead, I think I'm gonna use this one. Some either Teflon tape, or I call it pipe dope, but there's a liquid Teflon you can use, and you screw it into the block, and you're good to go, and this will work out. So I think we're gonna do that with this one. Okay, so I let this drain while we're sharpening the blades, and I'm going to go ahead and push this in, turn it to the right to close it, and because it came off on us, I'm actually going to take this off. This is a 15 16 crow foot, and you just turn it counterclockwise, and you can get it back in here, and it will actually work to take this off like that, okay? I'm not going to take it off quite yet. We're gonna lean the engine the other direction. We're gonna get the oil footer off, put a new oil footer on. That'll put this side up in the air so the oil will not come out this side because there's gonna be a little teeny trickle a bit. We gotta make sure those threads are as clean as we get them. So let's go ahead and take this down off the jack. Go around to the back. We're just gonna switch from one side of the tire to the other with this six by six block of wood. However you guys do your oil change, I'm just showing you how I do mine. And this also helps the oil filler. I wish they put the oil filler on the same side of the engine, but they don't. Some of them do on some engines, but this one they do not because it would make it so much easier to do it all at once. Okay, so now we're at the other side. The engine's leaning. And the reason why I lean it is because you can take it off with the with the engine sitting flat on your on your frame and setting flat and it, it will drain all over the frame this way even if i miss and it hits the frame it's going to look down the side it's not going to make that much of a mess i also have taken a this is a part of an oil bottle that i cut 
and it slides underneath here and you can either do it this way and let it drain into your container or you get a little more fancy and this is one that I opened up that allows me to go underneath the oil filter and just let it sit there and it'll collect the oil here. Now this is, um, this he put in, th we put in this a couple years ago. He was uh, not wanting to get the carburetor um, cleaned and so we had problems with fuel going to his engine. It's a nice feature to have. We did fix his, uh, obviously it's on the on position so he doesn't have that problem anymore. Uh, we fixed the carburetor, we pulled it apart and rebuilt it. But it's really nice to have when you change your fuel filter. Now this fuel filter, I'll put everything, all the parts that you need will be in the links in the description below. But I love to use this one because you can see through it. And all you have to do is turn it up to see the bottom. And this guy has absolutely nothing in it. So we're going to leave this go. But what I was doing is I was trying to get it up out of the way so we don't get in the middle of this. Now, there's a couple different oil filters that I use, oil filter wrenches that I use. And this one here will work. It's counterclockwise. I'm just going to go ahead and start it. And you're just going to make sure you have something to collect the oil because it will leak out on you and you're going to get a good amount, especially in the engine this way. And at least I know it's all going into my container. And then I'm just going to go ahead and put this off to the side. I'll normally let this sit for a little while just to let it drip for a little bit. And once it stops dripping, then I can get a rag in there and clean it up and then put the oil filter on. Now the oil filter itself here, um, I'll put the, also the part numbers, everything you need. I always try to fill it up at least halfway. And then, well that right there, it's not full. That just looks like it went full, but this is gonna, it's gonna soak it up in here. I put a little dab, it's actually the rubber grommet on the outside. And that's another thing too, make sure, and I roll it around and as you can see, it's now it's in the bottom and it's not, it's not full anymore. And I just like to have the oil filter it helps get the oil around faster. That's just my opinion. Everybody's got their own opinions on how to do their oil filters, but that's how I do mine. And also remember that the old oil filter, make sure that your rubber grommet is not stuck to the block. I have seen these grommets here get stuck to the block and then you put your new one on not realizing it and then you wonder why you have a major oil leak as soon as you start the engine, that's why. So it's almost stopped dripping here. And as you can see, by me tilting the engine right here, there's a lot of oil in there. Go ahead and clean up around the area before I put the new filter on. Go ahead and don't force this. This should screw on nice and easy. And then once you get to your once you get the gasket seated, it's usually about three quarters. I just make sure it's very, very hand tight. I don't use a wrench. I'm not doing the uh, fuel filter this time because it's in good condition. We do have a twin cylinder, spark plugs here. I might as well go ahead and do the spark plugs while we're on this side. Okay, it's a 5.8 spark plug socket or a 5.8 deep socket that I use with a short extension. This is a 3.8 ratchet and lefty loosey. Ready, tighty. I also use, I use an NGK product. It's called a CS6. These are the equivalent of an RC12YC, but these are Japanese and these are very good plugs. I just like them. These are also pre-gapped at 30 thousandths, which is nice. But the get normal gap for these twins is usually between 28 and 30 thousandths. And we'll go ahead and get the other side. Okay, now the other side, it looks like the headlights are, I must have put the headlight wire between the spark plug so it doesn't hang down. The problem with these twins and most twin cylinder engines is that their exhaust is very close right here. And if you, I'm gonna take the spark plug wire off. If you let this hang down, it'll touch right here. Now you sometimes you can pull some slack out. Uh, they have some really nice grommets that you can put in a frame. But obviously this one was working just fine and it has a uh, protective wire loom around it so it cannot uh, create any kind of interference between the headlight wiring and the spark plug. So I'm just going to put it back to where it was. It was working just fine after we get the spark plug replaced. I 
Okay, at this point, we've had the engine leaning over and I'm gonna go ahead and take this out and then I'm gonna put the other tube in. I put some Teflon tape around the end of it. I'm also going to clean up the inside of the threads with clean paper towel and some brake clean. I'm going to go ahead and tighten this up. Now what's nice about this one is it sticks out far enough that you can put a socket on it. I'm going to go ahead and just use, I don't want to hit the frame with the socket. When this little tit is up, staying straight up, and then you go ahead and push it on like that, and then turn it to the left and you're locked in. And at this point, you can turn this to the right and pull this off, all right? Now that, a lot of people even have their questions about this. This is so much better. Push it in, turn it, and you're good. Push, push it to the right, pull it out, and you're done. There's an O-ring right here. Every now and then, you may need to put a new O-ring on here, but these are very good and it's a great way to get rid of that, um, the old style. This, that's what comes on every engine. This is the old style. They've been around forever, and they use it on everything, but I have noticed that they always are loose right here at, the, at the, where you bolt to the engine. Well, at least that's my opinion, so and you can do what you guys want. We're gonna go ahead, and since we're on this size and we have the wheel up in the air, we might as well check your wheel bearings. All you have to do is push this side to side, and you'll be able to tell if your wheel bearings are bad. And this one is really good because obviously we have it greased every year. And at that point, we're gonna go around to the front and I'll show you how to grease these. We have a grease fitting here, which you can barely see. I'm gonna go ahead and clean that off. And a grease fitting here, all right? And like I said about checking your side wobble, just check to see how bad they wobble right there. And this one hardly wobbles at all. And also in here, these wobble. If they're really wobbly, you may have to replace some parts if you have guys out there have any issues. But if you keep them greased and you just put your grease gun here, what I normally do is I'll pump the grease in until I feel it get a little stiff. Once you feel that getting a little bit stiff, then you stop. And then take the grease gun off and I spin the tire. And this feels, I don't feel a whole lot of drag. And usually you can feel the, um, the little bit of tension from the grease and now then you'll know it's full all right I'm not all right so that's much better okay so it, it's it was you can just feel the tension of the grease inside the hub if you if never had them greased before it may take a lot of grease just keep pumping you'll either see it coming out here or you'll see it coming out your front cap here and that obviously at that point you did it too much and it's not like it's going to kill it or hurt it. You're just going to have grease everywhere. Right here's the other one. Just going to go ahead and give that a couple pumps. It usually takes a few pumps. And you'll see it coming out somewhere. I just felt it get stiff right there, so I'm going to stop. And granted, I did not wash this machine before servicing it, so you're seeing a little bit of dirt. Normally, I try to wash these machines, but his was very clean when it came in. Since we have it up in the air, we're going to go ahead and go to the other side. We're good with the front suspension. I'll go ahead and take the lock out of the back. This is a twin Intec 22 horsepower, so it's probably going to be at least two quarts. It might actually be even 2.25 quarts. This one here has a dipstick, which is a little, a little tricky. It has two nubs right here and then one nub right here. You have to make sure that they go in correctly. You can put this in backwards. They should have just had two on each side or one on each side, but not sure why Briggs. A lot of the Briggs didn't have this. A lot of them did have it. So it's really, it depends on the engine that you have. After you change your oil, you should always start the engine up, let it sit for a while, and then recheck it. Air filters here. There are many different air filters for the twin cylinder Briggs engine. And if you want to make sure you get the correct one, you should definitely go to a Briggs and Stratton website with the model and spec number 
of this engine, where you find the model and spec number is right here. And it's going to be very hard to see, but they're all imprinted in the valve covers. This one here is a 407777, and the type right here is a 1195. Very hard to see. That's disappointing because that is so hard to see, but there's usually a, they're usually stamped in your valve cover on the Briggs. This one has four bolts. You have the rectangular air filter, and this one here is actually in very good condition. We can blow this out. This is the pre-filter, and I just want to show you, to make sure you put the pre-filter in the correct way, there's a wire mesh here. Make sure the mesh is sitting up towards the paper filter because you don't want to have it this way because normally there's oil on this pre-filter. You should have this a little bit of oil on the pre-filter, not much, just a little bit, and then you put it in facing down because the air gets drawn up through the bottom, and it will not hinder the, pre the paper filter by having this little wire mesh that usually stops any kind of contaminants from coming through the oil-wise and hitting the paper. If you get this paper oil oiled up, you have to replace this paper filter. I'm going to go ahead and blow this one off, and we're going to replace this pre-filter. Now, if it's real dirty in here, paper towels or a cloth, just make sure that you know that you have a couple, couple in here. You don't want to push too far. You don't want to get them stuck in there, and you don't want to turn over the engine right now. But what I'm getting at is then I will either use a vacuum cleaner or I'll take it outside and blow it out and get all this debris out of here. Or you can even use a brush and brush this out. Okay, so here's a brand new pre-filter, and we want to put a little teeny bit of very light oil on it. All right, so I'm just, I just put a little bit of oil. This is a stainless steel bench, and I just cleaned it off. And what I do is I just put a little bit of oil on my bench. The textbook version tells you to oil this up and squeeze it out. Well, I don't do that because you can't get it all out, and it's way too much oil. You just want a little bit of oil on the top side, very light oil. So you just want a little bit, a little bit. That'll be enough to catch the dirt and the dust. That's all you need, because if you, if you put too much on here and it comes past the screen, you're in trouble, you're gonna ruin your paper element. So let's go ahead and get this back in. So we're gonna go ahead and put that in there like that. You're gonna take out your paper towels. You're gonna go ahead and put the clean air filter back in. And I always look underneath here, just to make sure this is clean. This isn't too bad. And I'm just gonna go ahead. And like I said, there are different air filters for different twin cylinder Briggs Intec engines. They I don't know why they went. They went from the square, then they went to the tubular type, and they have a they have a two air cleaner cover nut. They have a four, which I'm working on here. We want to double check your oil level and check that out. Um, I also recommend just check inside your fuel tank to make sure there is no major debris at the bottom. I can see there is a what looks like to be a leaf in there. And then also, if you have a gas cap with a vent on top, this one actually must be vented through the threads um, because it doesn't have a vent hole on top. But uh, you want to make sure that your gas cap is not deteriorating where the gasket is here. A lot of these gas caps will deteriorate and then, and then go into your gas tank. So you want to check for that. I'm going to go ahead and see if I can get that little debris out. A hook claw that opens up when you push it. I think I might have had, and I got a little piece there. All right, so they were the two big pieces right here. <laughs> These, it was like a leaf. All right, so that was the big piece that I saw in the tank. I got it out. And... All right, so this is just a, a little spring-loaded claw that I use, and it works out really well. So when you push this button in, a little hard to see, but when you push this button in, it actually opens up the claws, and then when you let go of the button, it grabs it. So it's a very nice tool that I've used for a long time to get stuff out of a gas tank. All right, so that's clean. Now we have one and three quarters quarter oil in here. We'll check it. And it is right at the add dot, and that was one and three quarters. So I'm going to go ahead and put the rest of that second quart in. So there's definitely enough oil to run this machine, so I'm going to go ahead and put the dipstick back in. 
We're gonna go ahead and finish up the mower deck. So as you can see, I scraped the mower deck out. That's what you guys should do. Now, this mower deck sits on its edge very nicely. If you guys need to, you know, don't have this thing falling on you, but put it on its back. Make sure you put a block of wood behind it so you're not crushing your pulleys, so you can lay it down on the back, but it's, it's working out just fine for me here. Oh, now I'm gonna also put Never Seize on the bolts. Okay, so I highly recommend some type of a Never Seize anti-seize. I call it Never Seize, but it's an anti-seize lubricant. In fact, it looks like this, these guys have had some on there already through the years, but just showing you guys just a little bit on the threads of the bolt. I always double check to make sure the blades are coming by each side, side to side. Make sure you double check, double check both sides. And these guys are, this one's almost perfect on that side. And I know this one side was a little bit off. Uh, still pretty good. Yep, we got very, we're really close to being even there. So that's good. If they're off, you have an issue and you have to deal with it. All right, so at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and clean up my mess and be right back. Okay, so I have it up in the air right now because it would be really hard to video underneath the machine. You're gonna have to crawl underneath your machine and you have a drive belt here. And this one here, it's a, it's a, hydrostatic, trans, a hydrostatic transmission. And these are pretty much non-serviceable. Yes, some people can take these out and drain the fluids. Unless you see a drain on the bottom of the transmission, as far as I'm concerned, non-serviceable. Unless you have a leak, then we gotta deal with it. But when I, why I'm here is because you want to look at your belt, your transmission drive belt, and you want to check your pulleys. And now, I mean, you, as you can see, all these pulleys are plastic. You can't really spin them, spin them too well until you put your lock your emergency brake on. Okay, so I just locked the brake on. That will allow the spring tension to not be there. And then you can spin. Now this one's a little bit loud, but it's, that's not that bad. This one here too. If they get worse than this, I would do them, but this is in good condition. The, actually, the plastic's in good condition. I always try to make sure that you don't feel any imperfections or if branches got caught up in here, and it does have a finger right here that's supposed to be close, and that's right. If you have any problems with these, then definitely replace them, okay? And also, you wanna check to make sure you don't have any major cracks in your belt. And what I try to do is I try to pull the belt through. When the brake is on, everything should be pretty loose. And you just make sure that you don't have any major cracks, and this one does not. So we're good to go. The main engine pulley here, there's really not much to look at unless you can, unless it's like bent, but obviously if it's bent, then you're gonna have a bad performance on the motor deck or the transmission drive. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this back down again, and we'll be right back. Okay, so we're just gonna go ahead and do tire pressure right now. Now there's a couple different ways you can do it. This one here is a electric pump that works. Uh, you definitely have to have your gauge, and I use the uh, compressed air from the shop and we're just gonna go ahead and what I normally do is I'll, I'll put a little bit of air in the tire first. And the reason why I do that is because I have ruined many, many tire gauges because somebody used slime in their tires. And I'm nothing against slime, but if you're gonna, if you're gonna put something in your tire, you should fix it with a tube, not slime. All right, so this one had 10 after that little bit of burst. So I'm gonna actually put up the 12. And the reason being why I put it a couple pounds higher is because it puts less stress on the steering and your steering will, all the whole front suspension will last a little bit longer if you keep your tire pressures inflated correctly or a couple PSI higher and that'll put a little bit less stress on everything. And these engines are very heavy, so these front ends tend to wear out quickly. Make sure you grease your rims, make sure you grease the front suspension, make sure your tire pressure is correct. I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of these real quick. And I would suggest definitely using your valve caps for all your stems. It does make a difference as far as getting something jammed in there. All right, so tire pressure is done. Go ahead and service the battery. Okay, on this one, the battery is actually underneath the seat. And the first thing I do when I check the battery is we're gonna go ahead and disconnect them and see if there's any corrosion on the terminals themselves. And this one, 
It doesn't look too bad. It looks like uh, it's pretty, in pretty good shape, but you can always use a little bit of sandpaper. You can go ahead and just, a little bit of sandpaper does, goes a long way. You can go ahead and do the other side real quick. Make sure that your terminals are clean and tight. Put a little spray. You can use Vaseline. You can use battery spray, which I use. Anything that protects the terminals from corroding. I just use the uh, battery protector. Let that dry. This would be a good time to check your battery voltage and check your charging system at the same time. All right, now this is not gonna show us amps. It's only gonna show us volts. So it's gonna tell us what we have at the battery when it's not running. Okay, so we have 12.27 when it's not running. Now I'm gonna go ahead and start the machine up. We already have done our oil change. I didn't double check it, but I know we have two quarts in there. So we should be fine. Put the emergency brake on. I'm gonna go ahead and start it up and run it about medium throttle and we'll see off the 12.27. You can see it was slowly coming up. It was going from a 12.27 to start, it was up to like a 12.5. If I would have kept on running it after a couple minutes, it probably would have been well over 13 volts. The charging system is charging just fine. And there is def different charging systems on the engines. So that can actually, sometimes they'll come right up to 14 volts. Sometimes they take their time. You have unregulated and regulated charging systems. This is charging just fine. And it did start up just fine for him. So I have a funny feeling that his problem was he must have left the key on. If you leave the key on, you can drain the batteries to dead if you have a shutoff solenoid on the machine. At this point, we just ran the engine, double check the oil, so it's gonna settle. We're gonna go ahead and move this back to the position where we're gonna put the mower deck back on. When you put your mower deck back under, under make sure that your arms, your deck hanger arms are facing forward. If they are facing rearward, they pull the mower deck back out again to switch them around. Now at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and put on our blade engagement cable, which will be easy to do while it's out. So you're gonna make sure that you go underneath the blade belt here. You're gonna go underneath your blade brake rod. And then if you have enough length here, you're gonna go 90 degrees up into this hole, 90 degrees with the hook. And then you come back to here and you can go ahead and put it through the slot and clip it in like that. Now that shouldn't come out like there. Now we go ahead and push it back under. Try to get it as straight as you can. I usually line up the front. Now we have to put our rod back in again in the front. And you do need to know which way that this is gonna face. And we know just by, it has a wear mark of a washer here. So this is gonna face like right there. We're gonna go ahead and put that through like that. Might as well put the washer and the clip on while we're here. And now your belt is here. It has to go up over these little hooks. And you can't quite see how the hook looks, but trust me, and you'll see there's like a little U-shaped. It must go in between that U-shape. We're gonna push it into the pulley and over the other one. We'll be able to see that on the other side. Okay, so we have the center arm here, and it goes right up to the center. And you do have to move the jack back and forth, manipulate it around a little bit to get everything lined up. And like I said, face your pin backward and clip it in like that. Now the cable itself is going to run above your brake, and it's going to go over to this little clip over here in the back. Not sure if you can see that or not. Right here, and we're gonna clip that in, just like that. 
Some of them had that clip, some of them didn't. I've seen some of them actually that lie on the mower deck too, but if you got the clip, use it. And then we're here at the back adjuster here, and that does not go on there, so I'm gonna put the pry bar underneath the mower deck and lift up just a little bit. That's all I needed, just a little bit. Then you can pull it out, just watch your fingers. Washer and clip. And we're gonna go around the other side. We're gonna go ahead and do the center arm and just and like this isn't even lined up right so I'm gonna have to move the mower deck a little bit it's really nice if you can do this on asphalt or concrete Took a little bit face the clip backward like that and this one back here basically the wear mark from the washer is here and like I said, if you guys need an adjuster, another adjuster, I have a video on how to take this arm off and make it adjustable. This guy here is one of the lucky ones. His actually adjusts out just fine and it does go up high enough for him, so he's okay with it. Go ahead and put the washer on and the clip. Now at this point, we're gonna engage the mower deck and we're gonna make sure that this belt is going around, like I said about this uh, U up here, like a U bracket, it has to be in the center. Now when you engage the mower deck, which I'll do right now, that will tighten the belt and then you just have to make sure that you're running around everything you should make sure everything is around the pulleys the way it should be just double check everything at this point we're going to disengage it i'm going to lift the mower deck up so we can run it i'm going to go ahead and because the engine has been sitting for a while we're going to go ahead and double check the oil which actually should be lower now See where it's at. All right, so it is about halfway up, and that's not bad. You can leave it there if you want. I'm gonna go ahead and let this sit overnight anyway, and we'll double check it in the morning, but it's in between the dots, which is good. So at this point, I'm gonna go ahead, take it outside, and make sure everything operates the way it should. Okay, took it outside, and it runs great. Everything is smooth. Now we go ahead and load the mower deck. We adjusted the tire pressure, which was the important part as far as deck leveling. And what I normally do is, okay, for one, this is a tool that we use to uh, do the mower deck. This part here will go up to the mower deck blade, and then it will show you in inches and in increments right here on where it's at, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and set this mower deck. I usually try to set it about halfway down on the height. And you're just basically, this side's easy to show you, is that you put the tool underneath the mower deck and you go up to the bottom lip of the blade itself. Okay, you just have to make sure that you do not lose your mark. So I usually press my thumb on this and then come out with it. Now it's saying here we're right about two and a half. Okay, now I'm gonna go around the other side and check that. And this is only side to side. This is not front to back. Okay, so go ahead and put it right around here. You have to have your blade this way, so you have to make sure that your blade is exactly like that, which is right here. And take it out here. And again, two and a half. We are right on the mark. So side to side is two and a half. Now we have to do front to back. You can do front to back first if you want. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Front to back, you're allowed to be even, even front to back or down a little bit I would like to see just a little bit down in the front is, up to a quarter inch is what you're allowed make sure you turn the blade the right way okay so in the back we are at about two and three quarter okay so that's up and in the front, the front is actually a little bit down. So we're not quite at two and three quarters. So yeah, so that actually matches up perfectly. Now, if you needed to adjust this, obviously we cannot adjust this side, side to side because of this bar. I highly recommend getting another adjuster over here, which I, like I said, uh, I have a, I'll have a link in the description on a video on how to replace this adjuster and where to get them. If you need to do side to side on this one, you can only adjust the other, the other side over there, which I'll show you over here. So you can adjust this hanger right here. 
up or down and that will get your side to side where even so you're basically taking that side over there and making it even on this side by using this adjuster if you need to go up or down on the front like i showed you on the the front here this front rod okay this front rod has a locking nut in the front and then it has a the adjuster nut here and you adjust this in or out to make the mower deck down in the front up to a quarter inch or level don't make the deck high in the front that is not correct so that's how you adjust the mower deck so that's pretty much it for how to service and maintain your Husqvarna tractor this is a model YTH 2242 it's 22 horsepower 42 inch cut machine if you guys have any questions or comments please leave them below please subscribe if you like this video please give it a thumbs up tell your friends about my channel and I'll catch you guys on the next one and if you're looking for parts for your machine, you lift up the back seat and usually it's either on the back right here or it'll be on your seat. There's a sticker on your seat. Now this sticker here is for the transmission, but this one here is for the, this is the one you need for looking up parts. And it would be the product identification number. And sometimes you can even use the model number, but that's what you would need to look up parts for your machine itself.